So, uh, how have you been enjoying uh, Glasgow so far, Vigo? Uh, well, I've not honestly seen the city much uh, at all because uh, I've been doing interviews and showing the movie, but and I've only been here a day and a half, really. Uh, but so far, it's great. Of course, it helps when you have great audience reception to to the work that we've done, and that that really mm-hmm. helps. Absolutely, so people were very wel- welcoming of the movie and welcoming of us. So um, I couldn't be happier. But Solly did mention you were doing some whiskey drinking, or was that just Solly? Did I? Uh... No, we did. We did. We did. We had. Uh, we had <laughs> it some wasn't preparation just for the for the. <laughs> For the movie presentation, oh, was it Dutch courage of the local uh, elixir, <laughs> and um, well, from different areas of Scotland. And then uh, last night, I was they were kind enough to give me uh, as part of uh, the award was a was a nice bottle of whiskey, and and that's I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> it's got you drank it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my friend. It's gone. <laughs> we yeah. drank it. And his family was down from Orkney, which was great. Well, yeah, and uh, we uh, we had dinner. We had a liquid dinner last night. Well, this is this is <laughs> hanging out with Scots. You know, you're going to drink yeah, a lot. Um, what struck me first by watching the film was this was made by somebody who really loves westerns. Mm. Um, I'm just wondering what drew you, you to that. You felt that watching it? I think so. Yeah, I, I you know remind me of lots of great westerns that I've seen. Oh, know, cool. Um, John Ford, uh, Hawks, that. Yeah. Hawks. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that was that was the idea. Once I realised it was going to be a western, I wanted to respect, I guess, the canon or certain traditions of the best of classic westerns so the way it's shot the way it looks accuracy historically in terms of costumes design language reflecting what society would have been back then which is not so different than now just very multicultural and multilingual melting pot all those things you want to do with the significant difference of having a woman which is not the norm in classic westerns, being at the center of the story, and and when her male companion goes off to war, we stay with her, and it's really about her, and it's it's a love story between the two of them, but it's centered on her, and that's unusual, I suppose. But we weren't trying to reinvent the form. Yeah, I guess actually, even having Solly though as the villain is slightly atypical as well. You know, having the, the younger character be the villain. Uh, it's quite interesting. So, Solly, how did, how did you feel, you know, getting that character? Uh, get, in fact, how did you just get involved in the process? Maybe a good place to start. Yeah, I mean, the process, it, it, it's unlike any audition process I've ever had for any other job. In a good way, I think. No, it was surprising. I, I didn't expect it. And my agent gave me a call saying, asking if I've heard of an actor called Vigo Mortensen. And I said, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think so. And... Uh, <laughs> And he said, oh, Vigo wants to give you a ring on on Monday. And I think it was a Friday. He called me, give you a ring after the weekend and and, and speak to you about a role in his new script that he's, he's mm. going to direct. Um, so Vigo called me and um, explained the character, explained the premise of the story and then said, I'll send you the script. And if you hate it, you let me know. And um, he sent it over and I read it. And it was I thought it was fantastic. The script, it, standalone, was was a wonderful thing to just to read. And um, I enjoyed it. I read it in one sitting all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> I think I held off on saying, sending an email right back. I kind of waited a couple of days yeah. to send. And the role that he'd envisioned for me or thought I could do was far bigger than I expected. And um, yeah, I was instantly on board, pretty much. And we kind of had a few discussions after that and spoke through the script and the, the accent, getting the, the accent right for the character and... Uh, talking about how we we want him to be and come across and yeah, we went from there and then we, you said let's do it and, and what were you looking for what, what, what made Solly stand out I was out? looking for someone who had a really strong presence which he does and not any kind of a cliche nemesis or bad guy I needed an actor who could who was skillful and somewhat daring I guess in that it's a complicated character. He, being a sociopath, basically, he can be extremely charming, but he can also be, you know, at the drop of a hat, he can suddenly, unexpectedly sometimes, be brutal, you know, just mercilessly savage Mm -hmm. and have no moral, you know, compunction about it. And 
to go from one thing to another, sometimes in the same scene. And then there's another layer, you know, a relationship with his father, which he has one scene in which to get that across. How complicated that relationship is. And no matter how brutal he is and the fact that he's holding a gun, he still could be himself intimidated by his father, for example. Things like that, <clears throat> you know, d demand a lot of an actor. You have to have a certain amount of range and intelligence and subtlety to make it really work. And Charlie did that, you know, was more than I could have dreamed of. Yeah, layering that <laughs> dangerous confidence that he has with, uh, you know, he could switch at any moment and shoot everyone in the room. You know, it's like we wanted to have that tension for the audience on screen where he comes into a scene and you d you don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah, he could be in a good mood today and stay yeah. that way, or he might halfway through the scene just shoot someone or beat the shit out of them, you know. Yeah, and part of that tension comes from your interest in structure, which is kind of not typical of West Westlands either. So you, we open with knowing that he's a killer, and the, but the... The other characters don't. Don't. I mm. like that. The audience has that secret. You know, yeah. I like when he goes to pay her a nice Sunday visit, beautiful day, she's gardening, and he couldn't be more of a gentleman, right? Mm. And But the audience is saying, no, 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 don't speak to him. You're all alone with this. You know, We know what he is to some degree. And uh, so that's, yeah, that's an interesting thing. When you structure it that way, the audience knows. The audience is ahead of the characters, yeah. yeah. But you also used kind of flashbacks a lot in uh, your previous film. Uh, falling as well. So what, what draws you to that kind of, or kind of avant-garde kind of structure? Well, I don't know that I'll always do that. I mean, I've <clears throat> written a few other stories and let's see, three, four of them. Only one of them has a little bit of that. The other three are linear. But in these two stories, it, it, it seemed the most, the first one, for some reasons that are fairly obvious, it had to do with dementia and, you know, memory and shared memory and how different the memory of the same event and a Rashomon sense is for each individual, especially within a family. Um, but I kind of like for both these stories showing the effect before the cause, you know? So even though my first images were of the little girl running through the woods and her fantasy world, I thought, oh, who, who does she become? And so I said, well, let's go right to the end, literally, of her life and then build backwards from there. Not completely backwards, it sort of comes back and forth and in, into the present. And then there's another string which has to do with what happens to my character Olsen when he goes off. So there's sort of three threads. <clears throat> and writing it, it was kind of a jigsaw to put it together so that it flowed, shooting it. And then in editing, tweaked it a little bit more. I knew that, same with Falling, you know, the first movie, I trust the audience and its intelligence, but it's not going to be the usual spoon-fed thing. You know, the first 50, 20 minutes or so, it's, you're, gonna, you're putting pieces together. Like, okay, what's uh, that's okay. But once you have those pieces, then you can build your own structure. In other words, from then on, less is more in terms of information, and the audience will put together the rest as they go along and it becomes their movie which I like I make the kind of movie that I would like to see an audience where I can participate yeah. and so by the end of the story it's my story you, you know it's not the director's and that's the way it should be I, that's the kind of stories I like so you know you, you never know what an audience is going to do I had no idea that the audience would be so receptive yesterday and laugh and get everything and understand and be into it you can only make Really, I think as an artist, as a filmmaker, not that you can only make I prefer when the director is obviously making a story to please themselves first. <laughs> they want it to, or an artist does that. It's a business, too, and the more expensive a movie is to make, the more pressure there is to appeal to all demographics and try to please everyone. But I think when you do that, you tend to make something that's neither one thing nor another tries to be everything and it becomes watered down and that you can happens dilute, a lot. Yeah. You say watered down, dilute the whole story we're yeah. trying to get across anyway and the characters yeah. are right. diluted and, and people think they relate but they don't they don't know why. Of, okay, and kinda, there's a little something for me in my community and there's a little something for uh, yeah. It's kind of like, well, so what did you think of the movie? It was okay. I mean, you know, they covered all the bases yeah. but that's not what you want to hear. You want to hear, I was moved. Yeah. It transported me. Learned it something. It made me think. Yeah. 
I, I'm sure I agree with everything. It made me mad. It made me happy. It made yeah. me sad. I don't know. You know, I, that's that's the kind of stories I like. But they're hard to get financed. Yeah. And they're hard to get distributed. But one, if they do work, people are grateful. Audiences are fun. Yeah. And I think one of the most moving parts of it is <coughs> Vicky Creeps. I think she's fantastic. And as good as you guys are, I think she's... No, she's, she's tremendous. Totally, she takes the cake. Really. So, yeah. and, and your scenes together are so different, you know, obviously... Uh, Olsen with with um, Vivian, you know, it's very romantic, very funny, and then obviously uh, your character Solly is completely different. So, can you talk maybe about working with Vicky and both mm. of you how how you deal with those different scenes? Well, yeah, I mean, having Vicky as a scene partner made me better in those scenes. She's so present and so subtle and nuanced, and really kind of looks at you. Test you. She really test me. Really looks. <laughs> she was, you know, she was looking at me like she wanted to kill me in some of those scenes, <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I kind of had to up my game to yeah. make sure that it wasn't, you know, the characters weren't drowned out because both Vivian and Weston, in a way, are there like very strong characters. And yeah, I had to up my game in order to not be drowned out by it because she's just so fierce, mm. and um, which is phenomenal. And I came away from the project a better actor for sure. Just not even necessarily being in scenes with her, but watching, watching her play other scenes, watching her play alongside mm-hmm. Vigo. Or yeah, he would come to sets and sometimes, which I've done that in my career too. He would come to sets when he wasn't working on days off, mm. which to me as a director I was like, great. He was really he likes being in this movie. He's interested in it. It's encouraging, you know, for a director that. And I think. The other actors too. That the other actors that are in your troupe want to know about what you want to know how you're doing today. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I it's quite took the it. pressure off as well. You know, I got to interact with the crew a lot more. Yeah. I made friends with loads of people now. Right. It's a and wonderful when you're not crew. Working, you can sort of hang and talk to yeah, them. I can hang and talk. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of built that relationship better as well. If I could, I would do that on every project. Go and <laughs> when you're not working, see what the yeah. dynamic is on set. Yeah, it's a good idea because it's different. And you never know what you're going to pick up. Yeah. The way an actor, the way a director Sometimes you can't know. You're in the way and it's annoying. But when you can... Yeah. If you're discreet and you ask permission, usually they're okay with it. Yeah. I think. And some actors can be very fussy and oh, get out of my eye line or yeah. whatever. And I understand. But I read as well that you base the character on your own mother. Um, uh, 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 so was there things in Vicky that you saw in your mother or things in... Your, and, and maybe you could talk about how Vivian Not connects to you. I mean, Vicky... I mean, I needed an actress who was would be really committed to the to this character to being independent to being believable as this character <clears throat> and you know Vicky is unflinching in her commitment to what she's playing and it kind of doesn't matter if it's suddenly the text is quite not exact or so it doesn't matter you know eventually she'll get everything perfect but it, there's never a moment that's false, you know, and that's very rare. You get a performer who does that, and like Charlie says, when someone's so committed, you know, when you're looking at them or they're looking at you, it's you have no other way out other than to play the scene at, a, at, a, at the most realistic level possible because she's in the moment, mm. each moment, moment to moment, she's completely there. And she does also have that gift, you know, which the camera either sees that or doesn't. And with her, what she's feeling, what she's thinking, if you don't know exactly what it is, you know something's going on all the time. It's coming through her pores. It's coming out of her eyes. She's <clears throat> Whether she looks at you or not, just you're, you can't take your eyes off what she's doing. Yeah. You know, even if she's in the background of a scene, let's say the bar scene when you're beating him up, the moments mm. when you see her and she's looking, you're involved in what she's thinking. Yeah, you know? 100%. <laughs> it's interesting, Sully, you were saying you were observing Vigo working. Uh, in Vigo, I presume throughout your career you've observed great directors and you've worked with people like, you know, mm-hmm. Derek Cronenberg and actors. I've watch many good actors. I was interested though, as a director, what what have you picked up from people like, you know, doing three films with Peter Jackson, doing three films with um, David Cronenberg, uh, anything specific? I mean, from some directors, you, you can learn more about what not to do. That's really important sometimes. <laughs> In terms of how you relate to people, the crew, the cast, how you communicate with actors, how you solve problems. Don't freak out. It's like, okay, well, I don't know what to do. Let's work it out together. 
the main things is the more prepared everyone is, the more people have an understanding, a collective understanding of what's to be attempted from day to day, the more relaxing it'll be and the more fun, the more everyone will feel involved, crew and cast, and the more chances are that you'll have time to take advantage of some freak thing that happens, an accident, a, a stumble, oh, that line wasn't meant to be there, but maybe that's good, rather than, oh, I'm trying to so f- focused, I'm trying to figure out what to do today, that I didn't even see that, I didn't even hear that, and I could have taken advantage of that if I'd been prepared and relaxed. The weather changes, what do we do? Okay, well, or this scene's not working, we're going to have to run off and do something else, but let's do it calmly, because we know what we can do. Yeah. We know what that scene would be, what the shots are. What, you know, what the actors are expected to do. They know their lines, all that stuff. And the, the best directors are calm because they've prepared really well and they're intelligent enough to understand that anybody in the crew, anybody in the cast might say something, even if they're not talking about the scene, that inspires you. Or they might have a suggestion. What if this was this way? And if they feel comfortable doing so, not scolded for it, once in a while, you'll get some genius idea from someone, or it'll inspire some change in, in the day, in the plan of the day, that's going to make the movie better. You'd be foolish not to take advantage. But some directors are not. What, what are insecure, the, and they don't listen, and they don't know. They're afraid to talk to their crew and cast. Almost. Were there any examples of that you can think of on um, oh. the Dead Don't Hurt? Any any sparks of impression? From, oh, there from, are many. There are many. Just just little things. I mean. You know, when Solly <clears throat> shot his first scene, which, you know, in retrospect, it was probably, I mean, I thought of it on the day, you know, it's probably a lot of pressure. You know, this is first day work, and it's one of the most intense scenes. It happens to be the first time we see him in the movie. Uh, you Got know, all one shot. It's all one shot. It's a lot of pressure on the crew and on the actors, I mean, especially on him, because he has to walk out. And I didn't say you have to walk this way. You have to. I just I wanted to see how he would do it before saying anything. If I had to say anything, and I loved the way he was walking. I loved the way he handled his weapon. I liked the way he approached the horse. I mean, he obviously worked really hard on that. There was very little to say other than just little tiny technical adjustments, and especially for the camera before we got the shot we wanted. So. That's being open. It's like, oh, he brought that to it. I like that. I like that he did that. I didn't imagine that. That's great. Or if it's something that's interesting but it's not great, you can say, well, we have that. Let's try this, you know. But, I mean, people came with, you know, and Vicky came with, you know, there would be moments that were funnier than they were meant to be or where she was intense in a way that I didn't expect in a certain moment in the scene or that it was by not pushing for an emotional result, they were more emotional, you know, things like that, that the actor does. And rather than be inflexible as writer and director and say, oh, that's not how I imagined it. Why is she doing that? It's like, oh, well, maybe that's even better, you know. Mm -hmm. Those sort of things, the unspoken things. And then sometimes someone on the crew would, cinematographer obviously would say, well, I know you want her, want it to be this profile shot when she's deciding makes this decision, no, I'm staying, I'm not going to be running out of town. Which is weird. And he said, well, it could be a slightly from behind her. I said, oh, yeah, that's even better. You know, just little things like that as you go along. It's an accumulation of listening, considering, rejecting, or accepting, and moving on. I think we got the shout for the last question, but I was just going to ask them, what are you doing next? Have you got a project? Uh, are, you, are you working on any directorial projects right now? And then, Solly... You can see if you get anything coming up. I have, a, I have a few scripts. It's just whatever one I find financing for first. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm trying to put this one out as best we can first and trying to get the money to make another one. Is there any type of film you're trying to make? Any other genre? or I have four different ones. One of the four. This is the one I'd most like to make, but it's the most ambitious. It's, it's a kind of Western as well, but it's only with indigenous, uh, with Native Americans in it. I really like that story a lot, and I, I, that's the one. If I had my druthers, but it's it's a tricky one. If this movie comes out and does well, then maybe somebody will take a chance on it. So, um, yeah, I can't say very much, but I'm I'm shooting something in Glasgow for the next five six weeks. So uh, you see me around. That's all I can say. So you get to know the city well. Yeah, I will get to know the city well. Okay. Um, people will hopefully find out soon. 
as soon as I can share it, I will. You know. Will you go back to that pub? Yeah, but where we where we went. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> What's this pub? Should we? We should do it tonight. We're, You'll right? get free drinks if you mention it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, the pot's the pot's still. Okay. Yeah. Good well, uh, thanks for chat, guys, and um, best luck with the movie.